Right, I tell you, dear champs, and oh my god, have a look at this thing, wolf. How good does it look? It looks like a high-end motherboard, right? Yeah, nah, this is not one of their high-end Maximus motherboards. This is, well, it's not like the entry-level motherboard. There are cheaper Prime, you know, Z790 motherboards from Asus. But price-wise, this is sort of like entry-level for a Z790. And it looks, well, certainly looks mid-range at least, but I think it looks like a high-end motherboard. And if you're going to build a system for overclocking, it doesn't matter if you're going to overclock the snot out of it. If you're building a system, this is where you start, right? So if you want a 13th or 12th gen Intel system, this is what you get. This is what I get. I'll show you. I have a 13900K and an RTX 4090. Oh, I can't even pick this up my shoulder. I crashed my bike, sorry can't pick that up but this thing here is my motherboard this is a z690 my motherboard ddr4 version right has a rtx 4090 and a 13900ks in it and you might be thinking well you've got the top end gpu and cpu why do you have like a sort of like entry level sort of mid-range motherboard well you do not ever need more than this and actually compared to my z690 prime this one looks much more high-end than my one mine actually has the, the io shield like this it's not built in like this one but the reason you get these is because you can overclock these things to the max it doesn't even matter what vrm this has you'll be able to overclock i overclock to 5.8 gigahertz all the time right maximum overclock i'm going to get out of my ks part these prime motherboards all the tough the entry level sort of asus motherboards they handle like overclocking no problems like seriously you do not have to buy a higher end motherboard for overclocking you will get the maximum gaming performance out of this and it has everything you need pci express 5.0 Four M.2 slots. Wolf. Four. I could not believe that when I looked on the spec sheet. You know, USB-C, 2.5 gig Ethernet, good quality sound, has RGB headers, four RAM slots, and yeah. Well, I have the DDR4 version. I think it is time for DDR5 now. And, you know, the low latency DDR4, the DDR5 is just as fast as that now and sometimes even faster. So I'd recommend DDR5 now. If I was building a new system, I'll go that. And this is the one I recommend, the crucial RAM, especially if you're not going to overclock. If you want something that's just going to be 24-7 stability, you get something like this, this crucial RAM DDR5. I'll leave a link in the description to this and the RAM. But I've got to say, this looks super high-end, this motherboard. I mean, Wi-Fi 6. As I said, the VRM, the power unit, will do, you know, overclocking, no problem. It's got everything you want, and it looks like a high-end motherboard. Like, they've done a great job with this. Integrated I.O. shield, tons of USB type A's, you know, even HDMI out, display board out. You do not need to buy a motherboard any, you know, higher end than this. And the good thing is, it looks high-end too. Like, some motherboards that are cheap, they look cheap, right? And it's a Zeus. You know you can rely on a Zeus. I've used a Zeus for years. As I said before, I showed you my motherboard. A Zeus are the best because number one they're the biggest two they have the most bios revisions so you know even like after the system is dead you'll see that they'll still update their bios on asus motherboards more than the other manufacturers memory support is awesome overclocking is amazing they're you know they're bulletproof asus i've never had a problem with asus and i always buy them i put my money where my mouth is this is what i buy with my own money so I mean, you can't get better praise than that. And if I was going to build a system now, yes, I would go DDR5, even though I'm DDR4 now. This is the one I would get. I'll show you a tough board in another review. Basically, you know, it's equivalent to this, but it's the tough version. It's black and, you know, it's very similar to this. But this is what I would get, sort of the white and silver sort of look there because that's my personal preference there. And I cannot believe how high-end this motherboard looks. It just looks amazing. Now, the only reason you would buy a higher-end motherboard is really just for features. So I've actually showed you a video you know, a crucial PCI 5 SSD that does like 12,800 megabytes per second right you can put it in this motherboard but you're not going to get full speed so if you're going to be using like pci express m.2 mvme you know ssds which are the latest generation ssds you go up to the maximus right so you go to the rog maximus that will have pci express 5.0 m.2 and you'll be able to use the you know the ssds to their full speed but most of us are not going to buy pci express 5 ssds at the moment 
And to be perfectly frank, PCI Express 4 SSDs are plenty fast enough. So if you're going to build a 12th or 13th generation Intel system, this is what you want, right? It has everything you need and nothing you don't need. Looks good, plenty of storage options, high quality ASUS products, and I swear on anything, this is what I would buy if I was doing a system right now. This is what I would buy, unless I wanted to go like an ROG Maximus and like make a, you know, a swanky sort of, you know, high-end build where I, you know, want 10 gig networking and I want PCI Express 5 M.2s and all that sort of stuff. If I was going to go super high-end, I'll go ROG Maximus. But for my gaming systems, I just get these motherboards, the Zeus Tough or Prime, they do everything you want. They overclock to the max. You can't beat them. So anyway, yeah, wait for my tough review. I've got that coming, so you'll be able to check out that motherboard, and I'll have a quick look at them side to side there. So anyway, this is what I would go with. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.